And welcome back, everybody, to the final episode in this year's Battle of the Dens. I think, uh, after last year, we kind of found that having a nice cool-down game, uh, at the end of the series was kind of nice as a way to just, uh, sit and chat and not have to worry about competition too much. And even though it is hot as hell in this room, uh, we're gonna play a cooldown game now, so we thought we would just have Nick play Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, and I understand he's very good at it. So, so, some of you guys may not know Nick, uh, but Nick is Scott's brother. Yes. And I want to give Nick, uh, an opportunity to explain a little bit about who you are, other than a Captain Toad Treasure Tracker master. <laughs> um, I'm an animator, uh, 2D, not, not a fancy pants Pixar guy. Yeah. I'm not either anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well. So you have that in common. Yeah. yeah. Neither one of us works for Pixar. Hey, high five. I also Wait, don't I work also for, don't work me for too. Pixar. I also don't work for Pixar. High high five. Five. We all have so much in common. Oh my god, I just realized that everybody on this couch except for me is like an art person. <laughs> How does it feel? Pretty shitty. Yeah. <laughs> How about them pixels? They're fine. You guys love them. Pixels. Fan of them. Love yeah. Pixels. Fan. How what's your favorite? Brush. Adam Sandler. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, good. You all right over there? Yeah. Anyway, Pixels, the movie. Come on, Nick. Oh, I get it. I get it. Okay. Yeah. Right, so, so, Nick, tell something. us more about you and what and and what you what your deal is. Well, Why? I'm an animator. Um, pretty much exclusively. Um, where's the man? That's, that's that's such a broad question. Um. Have you actually done extra credits episodes? Yes. Um, I did. Okay. I did one. Uh, Many moons ago, um, it was uh, MMO uh, economy and inflation, mm -hmm. and all the comments are basically about Dan's tie. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good gag you did, though, where my tie changed every single shot. Yes. Uh, and also, he's he's doing other stuff for us too. It just hasn't come out as of this time, so y'all y'all will see it later. We're gonna be doing more with Nick uh, down the line. Yes. <clears throat> I have not played this game in forever, but I love it but to it's death. Precious. It is so wonderful. I've yeah. I've completed this game 100% all the way down to the amiibo. Have, that shaggy. have people ever made cakes of levels? Because I I'm would. sure somebody has. There, there is true. there is a level one one cake of Super Mario Brothers. Somewhere. There's well, I'm just saying like this. Like, yeah, this it's is literally. These do look like cakes. It's yeah. a cake. Ah, oh, baby, forgot that. I love his animation too. Yeah, it's just so it just waddles around. It's so cute. Maybe. There's something about the like the Nintendo charm, like he can't jump because he's got a heavy backpack, yeah. like <laughs> that I love. Okay. So uh, cute. All right, Nintendo. Oh, bye. Yeah. <laughs> and look at his tiny legs. Oh, you missed the bunnies. Yeah. But he got a star. Yeah. yeah. Oh. This is unacceptable. He did his play. best. He did his best. <laughs> he succeeds anyway. That's the same face he made when he was excited about a demon. Yeah. Bello. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I'm I'm a Whoa. I'm a 2D animator. Um. <laughs> Sorry, we got distracted. No, it's fine. Oh, oh no! <laughs> yeah, I got all the way. That was very good. Just drowning sounds. Um, pretty much self-taught. Um, never went to school for it. Um, Florida education is terrible. I'm sure the comments Sh will. No, agree. <laughs> no. I I don't think there's any debate with that one. Um, but no, I never went to to school for it. Um. The basic, basically, the public schooling was not good for my GPA. I hated it so much that uh, I, w I wasn't able to get any decent money for art school because shock of shocks, that's expensive. Oh, don't. Yeah, it's just you're better off. <laughs> let's not talk about art school oh, costs. Yeah, hey, let's, let's <laughs> avoid the let's not <laughs> that's depressing a, college that's a, story. That's a oh, there's nuanced a nuanced discussion. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, let's uh, not I get really now. into... But no, the um, the game. <laughs> but no, basically, long story short, uh, ain't got no, no money, so I basically did all the, the education stuff, uh, myself, uh, for quite a while. It's kind of how art school works, too, yeah. Yeah. to be perfectly honest. No, yeah, no. At the end of the day, it's like, the lesson is, you know how to work. <laughs> yeah, no, like, there's, there's many, a, a Twitter discussion by a lot of artists on... Uh, there, there's no wrong path. First off, there's just there's that's just different, different yeah. ones, yeah. Different different strokes and all that. But um, oh. yeah, I basically uh, picked up some oh. some art oh. books, buckled down, learned how to how to do all that stuff by hand uh, with a 
cheap Wacom Graphfire, which I don't know if they make those anymore. Do you know what? Do you remember what art books they were? Um, the 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 cheap one was um, Preston Blair's animation. It's like eight bucks at Michaels, actually. It's huge. It's, it's tall and wide. It's a thin <laughs> book. And the other one is uh, one Dan's recommended, and I can't recommend it enough. It's uh, Richard Williams. Uh, uh, animator's Animator Survival, survival Kit. Yeah. <laughs> That's a must-have. Yeah. Like, every, every single animator, animator I've met. That. Yeah. And I would argue every artist needs that. Yeah. They should. It's very, very good. Like, I feel, at some point I wanted to do a Photoshop of, like, just Moses coming down from the mountain with two tablets. So <laughs> Photoshop out the two tablets. One of them, Illusion of Life. The other one, yeah. the Animator Survival Kit. I still actually have not oh. seen... <laughs> oh, well, it's back. It's fine. Hey, I got hey. another key. Throw it um, off again. I actually have not <laughs> gotten my hands on a copy of Illusion of Life. Honestly, okay, so Illusion of Life is... Animator Survival Kit is actually the only one you really need. Illusion of Life was like the origin story of where those yeah. principles like I, were first written about. Yeah, I kind of like I just want it more for um I it, guess like the spectacle. It is a very it. like it is a very pretty book. It's got some lovely art in yeah. it and it's like got a lot of the history of Disney animation yep. early on. Like it's it's really interesting. One of the things that I do kind of I'm bummed about for leaving art school early was I didn't Sorry, Someone there's, outside there's some having a loud conversation. Outside. Let's join this person's um, conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go live <laughs> to down outside Dan Floyd's apartment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> What's your the, deal? The one, like the one thing that I was bummed about that I didn't get to stick around for was there was a, a history course on animation. Those are so fun. Which I really want to still do. Animation it's, history is the like the most fun history class yeah, you can have. Yeah, because like I took art history and that was boring as shit. <laughs> it's so true. It's Art so history? Boring. What are you talking about? It's like I'm how not... could that be boring? Contemporary oh. art history is interesting just from just the wild ass stuff you see. But yeah, All the enemies. I'm getting new stamps. That's what I'm doing. Oh damn! <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> yeah, uh, I feel like we cut you off on your journey of who you are. Yes. Yeah, but um, yeah, no, um, so like, art is is not a a one trick one trick pony. It's you like, defeated an enemy. I did. I mean, that's 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 what I'm doing. I'm, oh, I thought it was don't defeat enemy. No, it's the, defeat all of them. They're, they're all going I pay down. attention. Okay. You're such a good listener. Trick shot. Here we go. Come on. Yeah. Oh, damn. Um, Take that bird. Go on that middle one. <laughs> Not Dan. No, no, Dan Jones, please tell me why I, you're so much better at this Okay, game. no, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm curious for my sake. No, push the second one down. See if I can... <laughs> what the fuck? Second one. Push the second one down. Uh-huh. And fall on that. Oh. And go in there. In the third one. Oh, I gotta I gotta throw my turn up first. Oh, never mind. Okay, kill that guy. I don't know if I can reach him. It's been a while. I don't think I can reach him from oh here. Don't you have to get him to stomp you? No, I well I don't, you're yeah, that's actually a thing. It's, it's been a while. There he Die. is. <laughs> Nicely done. Throw Still gamer it. Dan Jones. I'm just saying. And then we <clears throat> we call him Dan Prima Jones. And drop that one. Is there anything there? <laughs> I Oh yeah, yeah. There you go. It's a rock. It's a rock. Just playing video games, folks. <laughs> so it's a rock. Pro gamer. But um, yeah. So. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, before Dan Jones decided to tell me how to play video, we were gonna miss it. <laughs> um, he, his his big thing was uh, he he was He's very. He's dance-planning. Sorry. He, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that was good. I, I'm as far as acting goes or animation acting goes, I love the very slow, controlled stuff. Mm -hmm. Like um. One of my favorite uh, movies ever made animation-wise is The Prince of Egypt. Ooh, oh, nice. Thanks. I need to watch that again. It's been a while. It's... James Baxter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, James Baxter worked on that one. Uh, my favorite guy is Christoph Sarand. He's... All of his work on that is incredible. I mean, the, the entire team on that is phenomenal. But, like, that's the kind of stuff I wanted to do, and... Uh, yeah. And then I eventually found the animator survivor survival kit and that made more sense. It made a yeah, it made a lot more sense. It was all about the yeah. The the the, the, the actual control of the animation, not like 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 the, the the fun and the flash is nice, but like for me it's more about uh having more like slow concentrated control over what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean Wait, did you mean Fun of the Flash is in like Flash program or Flash and like pizzazz? P pizzazz. pizzazz. Okay. Like an like uh, the, the the term I've always heard is antics uh -huh. as an animation yeah. term. 
Yeah, no. I, uh... <laughs> I wish that I spent more time doing more <laughs> slow-paced animation things, because it's, like, very, very challenging, but I feel like you learn way more from it. Yeah, yeah. Um, My yeah. style definitely go drifts very on the small move, subtle side. Like, not very bombastic or anything. Yeah. Although I am amazed by animators who can do the bombastic kind of a uh, goofy cartoony stuff because it's just not in like my nature yeah no i, I love like especially like a uh, junk rat's a great example because like he's just all yeah like, he moves a mile a second in the in the short specific yeah and in, in junk rat's shorts that uh that sort of uh exaggerated or even just like in his intros his just like his emotes his yeah taunts whatever yeah yeah for sure that's like that's the animation i want to do that's the one that i feel like i'm better at <laughs> No, yeah, like, and, and yeah, no, no disrespect to people who l love that stuff. Like, I absolutely love it. Oh, yeah. Like, I wish I could do it. Honestly. It's like, it's it's like a penmanship, right? Like, it's... Yeah. You know, penmanship's a good way of describing yeah, it, actually. Yeah, like, it's just, you kind of have a knack yeah. for that rhythm. Yeah, like, like, they're, like, uh, people who can do, like, uh, kung fu stuff, like, action animators. Like, yeah. Or VFX, like, yeah. VFX by hand. Mm -hmm. I hate doing, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, drawing an explosion just by, like, you know, after like frame by frame, yeah, drives me yeah, insane. Some so, people eat that up, like I, I know, and they're really good at it. And yeah. and like when I was doing VFX, it was mostly like three D faking it stuff, right? Where, sure. Like, I'm not doing stuff by hand. I'm just like, here's a confetti effect, basically. <laughs> like it really is. Like this Unity did all the work for me. I'm just putting in different assets at different timings and making yeah. it look good when it comes up here, but. Yeah. Actually making, actually drawing out an explosion. Oh, okay. I need to not be like that's what blows, that's what blows my mind about like oh, Akira that we were talking about earlier, right? Like there's just these crazy explosions and crazy. I love it. I love watching that stuff. I love watching it being made, but I just can't do it myself. Crazy thing about Akira, um, they didn't have color correction software. Nope. Nope. So when they changed the lighting and the colors changed in the animation cells, they had to mix all the colors by hand yep. and animate the color uh, fading. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Wasn't it was it you that was telling me that um the first Toy Story was done without IK controls? That is what I have been told by some other Which Pixar is animators. Just like, what does yeah. that mean? So, that, okay, yeah, so IK we, is a yeah. way that's um inverted kinetics. Yeah, in, inverted kinematics is like it actually kinematics. it's kinematics. kinematics uh, right. Can actually right. it actually does a lot of things in a uh, in character rigging in 3D, but the thing that it's most commonly used for is, uh, like, feet connecting to the ground. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in, like, if you're controlling a 3D animated character rig, uh, it really helps to be able to move the character's root, like their hips and their main core of their body, while, like, to raise and lower that without their feet, like, staying rigid and just clipping right through the ground. So with inverse kinematics on, you can have their feet stick right where their feet are, and you can move the rest of the body, which really helps. Uh, if you don't have that, then you've got to animate, like, foot connection to the ground by hand, which is, like, which involves a lot of counter animation. Which I had to do for a 2D animation thing. Yeah. For, like, it was small, but, yeah, it was super tedious. It's just, yeah, it's just really tedious I can't and imagine consuming. doing that in 3D and, like, yeah. Yeah, so I'm told that in, uh, Toy Story 1, character rigs did not have inverse kinematics, which means, like, uh... Well, this didn't exist yet, did it? I don't Jurassic think... Jurassic Park, actually, yeah, Jurassic Park uh, definitely did not have inverse kinematics. No, they wouldn't have. They were doing that all by hand. And, and they were doing, like, like oh, okay, so, that's a different yeah. thing, but Jurassic Park animation is fascinating because, like, a lot of that was done with actual armatures, which is so freaking cool. Like... Jurassic Park was done through a portal into the future. Now, Jurassic Park was done, basically, because they got a bunch of stop-motion animators Originally, they were going to do stop-motion animation for it, but then they decided to go ahead and move to try it 3D. But they still had those stop-motion animators, and they built basically stop-motion rigs to animate those dinosaurs with. And then they had the computer do a lot of the in-betweening to smooth that stuff out. And it looks still really good because of it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like, uh, if it is true that Toy Story did not have inverse kinematics in their rigs, then, like, I, I keep on thinking to a, like, anytime Woody wants to, like, play dead because a kid is walking into the room and just sort of like, eh, flops to the ground. Then it's just all done by hand. And every time they're walking, every foot you, contact is done by I hand. I think you can see it. Like, I've, you know, gone back and watched it, and I, you can particularly notice how much they try to hide actual humans in the first Toy Story. Yep, yep, yep. Because they looked really weird. Yeah. Um, there's, like, the scene where they're all 
when they're watching the kids come in to the birthday party from the window, mm -hmm. and like they're watching, you know, them walking from basically the cars into the front door. Yeah, yeah. And like you don't really see their feet that much, and when you do, it's just kind of like, hmm. A lot of sliding. It's a lot of like, no, it's not sliding so much as it's just like this really weird marching. Yeah, like yeah. They're lifting up their knees really far, and yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, at the time, obviously, I didn't notice, but now, and I'm sure, honestly, I'm sure most people don't really notice that no, as no. much, but like. I didn't until I really watched it later when I was, like, after I had animated a bunch of those yeah. characters and had, and like, had been trying to animate them to the level of polish that is required now, then I watched Toy Story 1 again. I was like, wow, I couldn't get away with half of this. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, like, <laughs> That, but These were they, professionals? But they, well, they were, but that's the thing, like, the acting in it is still just amazing. Like, the polish isn't there, but, like... And there's even some really, there's some bombast to some of the acting that they don't, like... They're a lot more conservative with some of that acting now. Like, that that iconic moment where Woody kind of, like, gets up and buzzes his face with his arms flinging in the air, snapping in the air with the You are a yeah. toy! Like, that is a really huge, big acting moment that, like, you don't see that very often anymore, even in Pixar stuff, and it just is so good. There's lots of, like, when you become a professional at something, there's lots, like, you get into it because you love the thing that you are now a professional of, and you learn... Speaking of professional, the car's back. Hey, Dominic is also Dominic here. Is hey, somebody car. in the comments, can I get some fan art of Dominic? <laughs> Chad and Dominic together? Yeah. Yeah, like, there's just lots of stuff that you, when you learn, like, you see, you kind of, like, I call it seeing the Matrix, right? Where you've seen, like, oh, this is how this mm. X, thing X is done, and yeah. it's really hard to, like... This thing that I fell in love with, like, oh, it has these problems, or just, like... Like, for me, it's a lot harder to play and enjoy video games, mm -hmm. because it's just like, oh, yeah, no, I've seen all this, 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 before, and this is how the magic works. Yeah, no, I, I could, especially as a designer, I could imagine that. Actually, I'm curious, this conversation has got me thinking, I would, everyone go around the room and say who, like, one of your biggest creative influences is, has, has been for what you do. Lily, let's start with you. <laughs> so many. Well... Well, everyone in this room. Aww. 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 Lie. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> I, I was, uh... We'll come back to you, Emmons. Yeah. What do you? What do you? What's yours? Who's yours? I, it depends on like, like. Yeah. What's the question? I always so, feel want to. I want to quantify it. So it, influence. Sorry, the biggest crea single biggest creative influence for just what single you do. Single big. Yeah. Yeah. Let's. Yeah. Like, don't get. Don't rattle off a list. Just or just give one. Give. Oh, that's to me is harder. Yeah. It, it is harder. I'm just saying. But I'm saying like just to narrow it down. And it, it doesn't have to be the most. Just just name one. Like I guess Miyamoto. Like it. Like it has to be right. Like the, yeah. Like the simplicity in design, is something that like you. you like I have to strive for, right? Like it just had like he, what what he manages to do and manages to make normal as like a game design philosophy. Like I think that's just it's just too good to 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 say no to, right? Like I mean, like when I make a CCG, like I obviously have like he's not the best person to follow for a CCG, but like if if you ask me, he's like, oh, you can make any game you want, but it has to be modeled after the game of some person. Like it has to be Miyamoto. Yeah. No, that's a good answer. All right, uh, Nick, Nick, you're next. Uh, um, I mean, I said Christoph Saran before. Um, I think, as far as like the kind of animation I want, I, I, I want to do. His is the kind that I really want to do. Um, particularly, there's a scene in Prince of Egypt where. Um, <clears throat> Moses is approaching Ramses after he's basically brought the wrath of God down and he's just like Ramses is understandably upset that he's basically ruining his yeah, entire dynasty. Peeved, yeah, yeah. Sure. A little bit. But um there's this this scene like it's one of my favorite scenes in the, like the, that that movie is just so good because like despite the fact that Ramses is utterly a villain, like he's still human. He has like like, he obviously has, like, uh, father issues that are basically motivating his entire story. And he's just a bitter douchebag. <laughs> but, no, like, there's this one scene, like, where, like, Moses clearly doesn't want this burden he's being dealt with. And, uh, he, he approaches him in, in a temple, and it's just, like, this, this beautiful, like... You can find the you can find the, the, the particular shot on Vimeo, I think, of of him just uh, having this moment where he's remembering when. Oh, this is fun. 
uh, where he's remembering when when they were kids and how they just used to be just the worst children, and how he misses like his his brother in spite of the fact that he's basically ruining his life. And it's just it's one of my favorite pieces of animation. Period. Just, like that scene in particular has like always been like a huge inspiration when I try and do something particularly. Uh, slow or technical or very controlled. I always think of that that particular shot. Nice. I should watch that movie again. It's been a while. You really should. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I miss DreamWorks doing 2D stuff. Uh, okay. Dan Jones. All right. He's still he's looking. looking. He's, 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 he's looking people off right okay, now. Okay, so I'm... Screw it. Um, <laughs> I, I honestly do don't know if I have a solid answer for this. Um, as, as, a, as a kid, I think Honestly, uh, I don't know if it's a, a cheap answer or not, but um, honestly, web comics were a big part of influencing me as an artist because not uh, not for because we know some friends that might have been okay okay, okay. Yes. yes babies in um, high school yeah Scott's Scott. one of them but it wasn't so much of like the content or whatever <laughs> it was just the idea yeah, that people could go out and make a thing yeah. that they wanted to make and that was it it was made like. Um, yep. It was a self-fulfilled thing, and that was very important for me to know because up until that point in my life, I just knew like you go get a, you go get a job, and you know that's it. Like yeah. it, it's not so much what you make of it; it's what you is assigned to you. It was and like it was that was kind of the first. It was the first intro to being like, oh no, people do this. Yeah, like it. So I had a very similar thing where I thought like I I thought Scott was a millionaire because <laughs> I I was a fan. Is on the internet, like I, I was just like I watch, I, I followed your stuff from when I was in high school, I think. Yep. And then like Scott entirely shaped my art style. Yeah. I will say that. Oh my god, yeah. And and it was one of those things where it was like, because my first webcomic gig was on the Escapist, and it was just kind of like, oh no, it's just like people make these things. People roughly around <laughs> my age, people with the same tools and access that I have. Yeah. Just from your computer at home. And then it it really did kind of lead to this domino effect of just like also meeting Dan Floyd who worked at Pixar and I'm just like, oh that was a childhood dream and now I just have a friend who works there? Like what? No. That's insane to me. And it's just like it it is very good it, it's it's very humbling to be like, okay, no, it's just people make these things. Yeah. Yeah. Look, it's I a very just... important thing to always remember. Like whenever you see a task that's very scary, it's just like no, no, no. A person, yeah, a made, person this. made it. Yeah. Like, no sure. one's a superhero, yeah. even though they might appear. They work hard. They Don't work get hard. Me wrong. Yeah. Even yeah. James. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, that was kind of my first realization of like, that's a thing you can do. You can just make what you want. Um. I really love the design of this dragon. This is great. Yeah. He's so goofy. He's I love so him. Great. Like I still have art people that I look up to, like the greats, but. Yeah. I think that was more important for me. Yeah. So. I recently ran into, uh, I always get their names mixed up, because it's, uh, they both M names. It's the, the Brothers Chaps from Homestar Runner. Yeah. Um, we, me and Scott went to a, a live show there. Uh, we actually ran into Alex Hirsch, which is nice. mostly me bragging about meeting Alex Hirsch. <laughs> I want to meet him so bad. He told me to steal their strong baddie aside. <laughs> he did. And he said they probably would mind, so I really considered it. Yeah. <laughs> So Alex Hirsch is a is a criminal, and I love him. Um, um, but no, um, I ran into uh, the uh, the brothers Chaps, uh, Mike and Matt Chapman. Um, they they actually live in Georgia, which is one of the few good things about Georgia. <laughs> um, it's true. They, they they did an anniversary show for their their children's book, and they did all of their they did a live show for all of their music. Um, so like you got Fahugu Gods, you got Trogdor, you got. Uh, uh, Moving very slowly, which is like the, the Strong Bad C, uh, Sing CD. It's very silly, very entertaining. Um, but they, they were definitely a big influence for me as an animator as well, because for, for the same reasons uh, Dan brought up. Because like their their animation, like I hate to say it, not not the best. But like at the same time, they were making things like yeah, and getting by on it they, and entertaining people. Like I remember. Yeah. Uh, seeing, like, I, I actually met their dad uh, uh, many a year back at a Megacon in Florida. Strong dad. Strong dad. That's <laughs> <what>. <laughs> Yeah. 
Um, but um, I finally, like, finally after many years of, like, the, I mean, they haven't updated their, their site the, uh, regularly until recently. But, like, I, I ran into them and I was like, you guys are one of the reasons I'm an animator. Like, I've always drawn, but knowing that two chuckleheads are with, with a copy of every bad version of Flash are <laughs> getting by and entertaining people yeah. on, on their own terms and not, like, some corporate writer's room mm -hmm. was always a, a big deal to me. Just watching these people, like, this is, like, putting their signature out there and making something that's just wonderfully endearing like that was always a big thing and like <clears throat> putting in perspective thing like i read penny arcade when it was just a web comic yeah and yeah. now we're at pax so yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> that is true what was the stamp for this did you read it no Anyone? 70 coins 70 coins okay scott what about you uh i can't Quantify this into one person. That I is, cannot yeah. do yeah, that. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm like, I'm trying so hard. Uh, I know. Well, I've already quantified it into three, so. Yeah. Uh, I, it is impossible for me. Uh, I'm, to be fair, I'm sort of, sort of person, like, if you ask me my top five, 10, 20, 100 movies, it doesn't get any easier. Yeah. yeah. No matter how big that number gets, um, I can't quantify this particular answer to one person because I love this. Oh, yeah, um, this so as as a creative person I have always been uh, I've always been creative I've always drawn uh, if I had all the awful notebooks and printer <laughs> paper and loose <laughs> sheets of paper um, from seeing my SAT from when I book full of just Doodles. Yeah. Because I was uh, not paying attention in class. I was the sort of kid that. Pay attention in class. Do, do any, <laughs> any of you know what, um, like an essay umbrella was in school? We did this thing where we would draw an umbrella and have. I don't know why it was an umbrella and not a tree. We would draw branches <laughs> off of this umbrella. <laughs> um, umbrella branches. Yeah. And, like, it was to teach us to, like, have a intro, point, 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 outro of uh -huh. a paragraph. Um, and it was an umbrella for some reason, and That's what you thought was yeah, clever at the time, so yeah. yeah. And I would I draw the umbrella and have like a parrot thing on the bottom, just whatever we were talking about. And eventually, I got in trouble because I put, they're like, "Stop doing that! You're supposed to be writing, just always draw." Um, so it's not there's not one definitive person. There are many many turns and they're not always even artists um the brothers chaps is a is a nice early one uh my path is very similar to nick's yeah there's uh just listening to people now i would say there there's there was miyamoto obviously there was a time where i wanted to make games there was a time i wanted to make animation now i would look up to somebody like say dan Harmon, yeah. uh, whose work really resonates with me um who also uh fascinates me as an individual yep. um there's uh oda who makes one piece that was another big influence mm -hmm. i still really like i like to make fun of him so much <laughs> uh, i don't think if he ever i don't think he'll ever hear this but if he does i'm sorry um <laughs> Adore Chris Metzen. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I love Game Dad. <laughs> um, I think his work is. This coin rod's so nice. Sorry. Nice. Nice. Nice coin nice, nice. 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 I find his work to be hokey as hell, but I've never met someone that just loves their own work so much. The, his, the sincerity there is beautiful. Yeah. Um, two to fifty-one. <laughs> two to fifty-one. <laughs> um, James will back you up on that one. Yeah. Yep. And I think a lot of it is like his, like when you when you think of narratively or, or just like culturally, what like everybody like, what's your influence? Who's your big influence? It is a very kind of cliche way of looking at it. When in reality, it's always a group of people. Like you're the sum <laughs> of your experiences, and like it's never. Like you're like the master apprentice oh relationship type thing is just not what we do as a culture. Some, yeah. some there are, like, I, 
I won't go that far. I do think that there are... So, 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 so some people have that, that moment, that epiphany. Um, some people real, meet someone, see something, they realize. Um, That's kind of what I was going to get to about my influences that I can think of. Okay. I remember having. Did I like, just feel your thunder? I'm, no. Okay. I think you you're leading into it very nicely. Okay. Like I can't really think of like a, an individual person <clears throat> per se, but like I remember having like some really specific moments uh, at young and younger and slightly less less younger times. Um, like I I remember. So, so a big part of my influence with art is also music, right? Which I'm sure most oh, of yes. us have that, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I remember having like, well, one, learning guitar was super important because it was just kind of like the uh, the reason why I think most people should learn how to play an instrument is it's a very good example of like if you practice a thing, you'll get good at the thing, mm -hmm. right? Art is the same exact way, yeah. um, and so that leads into a whole slew of things but specifically for me because i did the research and more more music um mm. when i discovered a band like gorillas that was like so mind-blowing for me because it was just like it's, it's art and music and culture all like wrapped into this amazing thing and i remember having a very specific moment getting my first gorillas album and just being super excited about that and like wanting to make things because of what they were making so that was like way younger um along with like Disney movies and stuff like that. Like, it wasn't just a movie. It wasn't just a album. It was, like, all of it. Yeah. Which is super mind-blowing to me. Um, and then... Uh, and it was also in a style that was just so edgy and cool. So I was just like, this is awesome. Um, and then, for in terms of, like, me wanting to make games specifically, uh... It's a mix of, yeah, growing up with them and the nostalgic factor, but then also I remember Portal being, like, the the thing that was just like, no, I want to make yeah. these for a living. Like, that was the first time that I was just like, oh, first-person shooters don't have to just be kill everybody. Yep. Yep. They can be something interesting. I remember playing your college project. Yeah, and it was very, very influenced by Portal. Um, and that's a huge deal. And then, I guess, like, what was the third one I was going to think of? Uh, oh god, now I'm totally drawing a blank. You know, it was just like, Gorilla's Portal, and, and, I have to say, like, just starting to make my own things with extra credits and stuff, too. Like, just, I don't know. Starting to make things that are bad, like, you're just, I just, my first comics were just so bad. Like, I never want to look at them ever, ever again. <laughs> But it was important that I did them because it just led to this path of being here right now. Yeah. So, I don't know. N not, I don't want to say... Not, not that I am my own influence, just the fact that, like, yeah, even... my, my blind eagerness got yeah. me here, right? Like, that's kind of what it feels like. Yeah. I was just like, I'm just going to make a webcomic and see what yeah. happens. Even with your worst piece of media or whatever you've made, it still led you to where... We are. Yeah. Yeah. And if you look back at your old stuff and are like, uh, that stuff, that's a sign that you're getting better. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, if you, yeah, if you look at stuff that's old and you're just like, I did a great job, it's like, well, you haven't grown that much, have you? Yeah. It's Maybe a, not. I don't know. I mean, unless you're like really far into it, but still, you know. It, I, I've, it. I've yet to meet an artist who, a, a good artist, I should say, that's like, that has liked their work past, you know, six months. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, we all have that expiration date of just like, oh, God, no. Yeah, you can be proud. You can be like proud of it for what it was at the time, but yeah. like you, but you definitely feel like you could do better now. I definitely have jokes that I'm like, man, that was great, <laughs> but yeah. like, but then I see the drawings and I'm like, oh boy. It's funny you mentioned the music relevance and stuff. Like I remember when I was interviewing for the Pixar gig, just looking at my reel, the creative director could tell I played an instrument just from looking at the animation. I still don't know how. Rhythm's really important for that. I guess so. The rhythm and timing really does play into it. Yeah, it was wild. Um, I think my main influence is Bill Watterson though. Like, and he's not even a, like, he's the guy who made Calvin and Hobbes, the comic strip, and like, he's not even a, like, there's plenty of animators who I've learned a lot from too, but the, uh, 
for the people that are 13 watching, a comic strip is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are the newspapers. And the, oh, sorry. For the people and, that are 13, and, and a newspaper one, is. <laughs> the more recent, like, huge influence for me has been stuff like Steven Universe and Gravity Falls, yeah. where it's like... I mean, for me, personally, it's like, oh, these are people who are now actually in my age range making this stuff, and it's amazing. Yeah, no, that, that actually and makes me happy, too. it's also, like, covering stories and content that are hit close to home and mean a lot and say something without bashing you over the head with it. Yeah. There's yeah. this beautiful elegance to it that is, I, I'm just like, why didn't I think of that? Like, I don't know. It's just, it's so good. It makes me really happy seeing stuff like uh, Steven Universe and Undertale and stuff like that being made by people y like from a generation younger than me mm -hmm. who are like, Stuff that has showing a level of emotional maturity and sensitivity that the media I grew up on did not have. Yeah. Like that, I wish I was raised on this stuff. It, yeah. it gives me a lot of hope for the future. Like I am really excited to see what the future looks like with kids raised on stuff like this. I'm like, I'm super jealous, but also super excited, right? Like, I cannot wait till my niece is old enough to watch Steven Universe. <laughs> yeah. Like she's she's still she's only three, so she's still a little bit too young to kind of grasp the concepts. But at least like. It's a friendly enough looking show that she can watch it at a young age and fall in love with it early and then like, I'll just slowly yeah. try to influence her the right way. Um, and it's, yeah, it's one of those things where it makes me super happy. It's like, it's like seeing kids at PAX where I'm like, oh man, your childhood's gonna be so great. Yeah. And I'm just like, man, I'm kinda jealous. <laughs> but I'm also glad that more of you are gonna be pumped into those worlds. <laughs> we need it. <laughs> Oh, it's like my friends having kids, right? Like, Easter. yeah, friends yep. like super nerdy friends. I'm just like, oh man, you're gonna have the best Halloween costumes ever. <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys, okay. thank you guys very much for watching this Battle of the Dan's conclusion. <laughs> Uh, I hope you all have enjoyed this, and, uh... Dear God, I hope you enjoyed this. <laughs> I've enjoyed it. I've yeah. enjoyed you guys. Yeah, I, I still really don't know. really understand how I've managed to be lucky enough to land on this couch right now, so... I, I yeah, I feel still very lucky to have, like, gotten to... In making this show thing, like, it has ended up putting me in contact with the, a lot of the people that I care about most now, and that's, like, I don't Insane. know. Insane. Yeah, like, Insane. I... I this, this is like the best part of my life, and I'm really happy about it. So, it it actually is. I'm serious. I, I am I am incredibly lucky lucky to know all of you. Yeah, like I get to work like with my wife on this show, and I get to work with a lot of my best friends on this show, and it's just really darn cool. Pax so. is like my Christmas. <laughs> like it really is. Like yeah. this is like actually you know like my family. This is literally just... my one vacation. Yeah. <laughs> all year. So well, I'm glad you're all here. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Nick, for joining us for the first time. Yes. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> We're, I'm very glad that I got to meet you. Yeah. 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 I'm glad and, to be uh, here. Yeah, I'm also glad like to have met you through this. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> oh, I'd like uh, to not thank Dominic the car. Yeah, Dominic, you... Yeah, let's... Uh, you, now that we've done all our shout-outs to people who really appreciate it, let's just list off the people we fucking hate. Like, <laughs> all right, Chad. I got problems with a few of you. Yeah. <laughs> all right, here are okay. the following places I don't want to work. Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to see you guys next time. Thanks for coming and playing on Battle of the Dance, and goodbye. Love you. Bye. 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 Bye.